So welcome to disc two of the BPA Film Collection, volume two. So our first film on this disc is Intertie, the Pacific Northwest, Pacific Southwest Intertie. It had been talked about for many, 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 many years before it was ever technically possible to do it. 1919, Carl Edward Magnuson, who was a professor at the University of Washington, was imagining a national grid. And of course, J.D. Ross was talking about a national grid when he was the superintendent for Seattle City Light. When J.D. Ross came to be a first administrator of Bonneville Power Administration in 1937, he was still talking about a national inner tie, all based on this idea that this hydroelectric power could be sent out and then connect up with other power systems across the country. In fact, in 1938, he presented a paper it's called Electric Power of the future. It was delivered to the Engineers Club in Seattle and it outlines everything that's got to go into making a national grid with diagrams and maps of how they're going to connect the entire United States. It's a fascinating piece of writing. The technology didn't really exist but he envisioned it anyway. It took until the late 50s when the Mercury Archivals was invented that we were able to test conversion from AC into DC and back into AC that meant that long distance transmission was finally possible. And then it was signed and permitted in 1964 and first energized in 1968. Of course, you know, BPA loved to make films about these great big projects of theirs where they had just broken through something amazing. And here it was an on their opportunity. So they made this terrific film, lots of aerial photography, a really great bluegrass score. It's made in that great 60s style where it's kind of freewheeling, so you have a lot of people talking, but you don't see any talking heads. It's all voiceover, and they're not identified. So it's kind of an in-your-face sort of style that was very popular in the 1960s. So the film was made in 1969 and heavily promoted. As a result of its excellence, it won a lot of awards, including the Venice International Film Festival Diploma of Excellence, the Golden Eagle at the Council on Non-Theatrical Events, Film of the Year from Industrial Photography Magazine, Bronze Medal at the Atlanta Film Festival, International Film and TV Festival of New York, Honorable Mention at the San Francisco International Film Festival. It won a lot of awards and it got a lot of attention. Anyway, it's really fun and I think you'll really enjoy it. When President Franklin Roosevelt dedicated Bonneville Dam, the federal government had taken its first step toward a grand vision, to put to widest use the power of America's mightiest Pacific River. This film was made to remind all of us who benefit from it of what it took to make that vision true. This is a salute to the pioneers and builders of that vision and to the river that made it happen. 1987 was BPA's 50th anniversary. It was a big deal. They did a big coffee table book called BPA and the Struggle for Power at Cost. A lot of things happened around that 50th anniversary and they wanted to do a big film that gave the whole story about BPA and how these dams came to be built to begin with and then how the transmission system happened and the irrigation systems happened. Now the film isn't just about BPA, it actually talks about the geology of the Columbia Basin and it's historical. It pulls in a ton of footage from our older films from Columbia and Hydro. It's almost like the greatest hits of BPA, so it's extremely well made but it wasn't really made by BPA. It was basically turned over to Hillman and Carr, which was a film company in Washington, D.C., but they did a tremendous amount of research and it won many awards, including Golden Eagle, which is the same award that Intertie won, and it also won the award of Distinguished Technical Communication for external audience from the Society of Technical Communication, 
woohoo! Anyway, we look to this film as the last overarching film made about BPA and basically the end of the golden age of BPA filmmaking. BPA's filmmaking changed after that. It's gone more to a video, more subject-oriented, shorter. We have a lot of great videos now, but they're different than these types of films that were made to be shown theatrically, made to be shown in classrooms, at community groups. It was just the end of an era. This is the Big Bend country of the Columbia River. Vast, rugged, remote. Almost as remote today as when Canada's early fur traders used this route to open up the fur trade in the Oregon country 160 years ago. So we're completing volume two by offering you some bonus films. The first one is called Action on the Columbia, and it was made in 1964 to celebrate the Canadian and U.S. Columbia River Treaty. It was made by British Columbia Hydro, so by their kind permission, we show it to you here. It's an interesting film because it talks about putting three dams to hold water on the upper Columbia in Canada, in British Columbia. And it's told from the Canadian point of view. They're telling the people of British Columbia what this treaty is going to do for them. There's some wonderful aerial footage of the upper Columbia River before the dams went in. Because the original dams on the Columbia River went in quite early in BPA's history, we didn't get a lot of really great aerial footage of what the river used to look like. There's not much of it out there because we started building the dams quite early in the world of filmmaking and aerial photography. And our team here that has been working on the renegotiation of the Columbia River Treaty was fascinated to see this film because it shows the river before the dams went in and it's quite spectacular. And we appreciate BC Hydro giving us permission to put this film on our disc as a bonus for you to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the Columbia River Treaty. And the last film is the first film, so we're going full circle. The last film that we have for you on the bonus is the shortened version or international cut of Hydro, which is BPA's first film. But if you remember it, there was a lot of local references and a whole section comparing the rates from the private to the public. And apparently there were requests from the business community to remove that so that the film was more informational but less specific on rates. This version was also what we're calling the international cut because this was the one that Henry Wallace, the vice president, took to Asia on his Goodwill tour in 1944. We talked about that in the last volume. Now, how did we get this? This is a great story. We knew that there was a shorter version of this film made from different interviews that we'd read with people that worked with these films, but we had never seen this version. And of course, as we know, most of the copies of Hydro were burned in 1953, along with the Columbia and other materials from the early days of BPA. So we had no idea if we would ever find this. And one day, a BPA employee came in and said, I found this film in an antique store in Vancouver. I bought it for $1.50. I wanted to decorate my walls with the film. I thought I'd put the reel up and kind of string the film around. But when I pulled it out, it said Bonneville Power Administration, and then it said Hydro, and I thought, maybe this is something you might want to look at. So she brought it to me, and I could already tell right away it's this much shorter, and I thought this could be it. And we looked at it, and it was. This is a really good version of this film. I think people will really enjoy seeing it. That's basically the end of the group of films that we've collected for you. So we invite you to enjoy these and also please visit our webpage that's dedicated to our film collection. It's available on bpa.gov and we want you to also come and visit us in the library. We're putting in a visitor center. It's gonna be historical and current exhibits and materials, and this is also where you can call or write or email to request copies of these DVDs, which are being given away for free, both volumes, and we really hope that you enjoy them and come and visit us soon. Thank you so much.